Timelapses are a great way to show your 3D printing. You take a single picture after each layer is done and when you play the pictures at high speed, it looks like your printed object is slowly forming out of thin air. Many people will tell you that you need a Raspberry Pi to capture these time lapses, which are expensive and pretty hard to come by. To capture time lapses without a Raspberry Pi, we'll need a different way to trigger a camera. To keep everything simple, I'll use a smartphone as the camera. What we need is kind of like a selfie stick, a button that, when pressed, triggers the camera. I've already taken apart too much of my wife's things, so I won't be destroying her selfie stick as well. Question is then, how does a selfie stick work? By using a multimeter we can check what happens when we click the button on the selfie stick. It's probably forming an enclosed loop between two of the terminals. It turns out that there is also a resistor in the circuit. So when you press the button it's not just a short circuit between two of the terminals, there is also a 220 ohm resistor in the circuit. I checked all possible connections and found that only the third and fourth terminals are connected when the button is pressed. Now we understand how the button on the selfie stick works. So let's start by making a camera trigger and later we will figure out how to use the trigger to capture time lapses. We'll need a pair of old earphones with a microphone. The more awful they are, the better. Just make sure the audio jack has four rings on it. Cut away the earphones and keep the side with the audio plug. Expose the wires. There are usually three obvious wires and a sleeve which is the ground. I prime the wires by putting some solder wire on them. Next, we need to figure out which wire connects to which terminal of the audio jack. Remember, we need just the third and fourth terminals for our use. Once you identify the wires coming from the third and fourth terminals, cut off the two excess wires. Connect the 220 ohm resistor to one of the wires coming from the headphone jack. To make things more convenient to use, I also added an extension electric wire. I covered the solder wire and the resistor with some insulating tape so it doesn't contact the second wire. I know it looks awful, I'll get some heat shrink for next time. I soldered an extension to the other wire coming from the headphone jack as well and added some extra insulating tape to finish the job. Now we need to solder the limit switch. Solder the two open ends of the extension wires to the limit switch so that when the switch is pressed the circuit closes. To secure the soldering I poured some hot glue onto them. I molded its shape using my fingers while it was still warm. Make sure that everything works and that pressing the switch forms a closed loop with 220 ohm resistance. Alternatively, you can plug the switch to a smartphone and make sure that the camera is bigger when you click it. This is a good place to know that for some reason this only works for 3 out of 4 smartphones I tried it with. I'm not really sure why. To capture time lapses using the switch we just made, we'll use a simple Cura extension. Load the model that you want to print and press the extension tab at the top. Press post processing and then modify G code. Press add a script and look for the time lapse script. The settings here will send the printhead to x equals 0 mm and y equals 190 mm. We want the printhead to trigger the limit switch at this position. I mounted the limit switch at a different location, which was more convenient for me. To find its exact position, I used the printer's interface to move the printhead until the switch was triggered. You can also ask the extruder to retract some filament, so you will have less stringing due to the time lapse pauses. I also requested the printhead to slightly move upwards before it moves to its time lapse position. Once you are done setting up, hit the slice button and generate the G code. Notice that Cura doesn't recognize the edit script, so the estimated time is wrong. If you try to preview the print, you won't see the time lapse pauses. However, if we open the newly generated G code instead of the STL file, you'll see that the edit time lapse script is there. I have an Ender 3 and I mounted the limit switch onto one of the screws which are used to tighten the X axis belt. After each layer, the print that moves all the way to the right side of the print bed hits the limit switch and triggers the camera. I guided the wires upwards using some tape so they don't interfere with my prints. From there, the wires go straight to my phone where I capture the images. 
I use an open source camera app called Open Camera for taking pictures. It gives you manual control over the camera. You can set the focus and exposure and keep them locked for the entire duration of the time lapse. Select the desired resolution and a ton of other settings. You can also save the images directly to a Google Drive folder so you can view the print remotely, which is pretty convenient. To have a smooth start, here are a couple more tips. First, make sure you only use artificial lighting. Sunlight is great for still images, but it changes over time and your timelapse will end up flickering. Second, the print ad pauses at its timelapse position. If you set the pause for too long, it may capture multiple images. You can adjust the duration of pauses in Cura. You are all set to start capturing your own time lapses as soon as today. Thanks for watching and if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe to my new channel.